Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. This morning we're happy to welcome Reverend Bethany Peerbolt to lead us in worship. She serves at First Presbyterian Church in Birmingham as their associate pastor for youth and mission. Her calling to translate and interpret scripture and church tradition for the next generation has led her to a thriving ministry on the social media platform TikTok. There, she teaches her 300,000 followers for 15 seconds every day and leads a digital ministry of those seeking God outside of the church walls. Thank you, Reverend Bethany, Thanks for, having for me. being here today. Special announcement, today's a bit of a special day in that following the service, we will be celebrating Dorothy's birthday. And it's also special for those of you like me who get hungry after worship and that I know there are some special cake and other treats, I believe, that will be available in the lounge. So please join us after worship to celebrate Dorothy's birthday. Session has designated Sunday, September 4th, for online worship only, so there will be no service here in the church on Sunday, September 4th. That's the Sunday which falls during the Labor Day weekend, so those of you like myself who are likely to be away at their cottages, please join online for that worship. Also, the Red Cross will hold a blood drive here in the church on Tuesday, August 30th from 11.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. There is a critical shortage of blood supply across the country. Please donate if you can. Directions on how to set up an appointment are on the posters on our church bulletin boards. Now, let us worship together. Our weeks look different from one another's. Together, now, we worship God. Past and future fight for our attention. Together, now we worship God. With diverse unity and confident doubt, together, now we worship God. Please stand for our opening hymn. <laughs>
needed. If we say we have no sin, there is no truth in us. Let us confess our sins together to Almighty God. Please respond to the prayer of confession by saying Amen. God, you have proven your expertise as a creator. Yet there have been times we were sure we could do better. Your paths are perfectly laid, and we have decided to stay in the comfort of our familiar spaces instead. Set a line in the sand and call for us again to follow you and build your world among us. Amen. Amen. We can stand before God, not through our own goodness, but through God's great kindness to us. Rejoice and be glad, for God's mercy knows no end, and his faithfulness extends to all generations. Amen. Spirit, help us hear these ancient words in a new way. Allow our hearts to know more fully what we are part of and how we fit into the story of God's people. You may be seated. The first reading is from the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 9. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now Amy Johnston will sing Ave Verum Corpus by Mozart.
Our second reading today it comes from the uh, letter to the Romans, um, and it is, we're going to read from chapter 12. I'm going to read verse 1 and 2 for you. So let us listen to what the, the Spirit has for us today. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, sisters, siblings, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. That is your true and proper worship. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what is God's will, good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. I thank you again for uh, letting me join you today. Um, I actually, a couple hours ago, was uh, in Denver uh, with a group of teenagers up in the mountains at about 9,000 feet. Um, so this air feels much easier for me to be speaking and preaching to you at uh, back here in Michigan. So thank you. Uh, this verse from Romans uh, probably sounds a bit familiar. We have heard this idea, do not be conformed, but be renew, be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may know God's will. And I wanted to look a little bit deeper uh, into what is being said here because at its essence, I believe the scripture is reminding us that comfort does not always mean it's correct. Have you, do I have any pottery people, maybe on a wheel, or anybody who works with clay? Oh good, so you won't know when I say something wrong. <laughs> so there are a couple different ways that you can do pottery. One is with a mold. And there's two sides of the mold that get placed together and wrapped tightly. And there's usually one or a couple of holes that you pour uh, clay, like a watery clay, it's called slip. And you pour it into those holes and you let it sit for a little while. And then you pour out the rest of it and let it harden. Then when you open that mold, you have a pottery piece of some shape uh, that is hollow usually on the inside. This is used often when you need uniform products. You need the same ornament or the same uh, teacup or something that you want it to be the same over and over and over again. It's reliable. We assume we think it's going to be more reliable, but some of the videos I've seen, uh, it doesn't always work exactly. The clay doesn't always get into all the pieces it needs to get to. It's low effort. You just pour it in, you pour out, you leave it there. But there are limited choices on what can be made from that clay. And sometimes you don't know exactly what is being made. I saw someone recently that found a bunch of molds. They didn't know what was inside. They were being sold in like a auction. And they bought them all and they one by one without looking at what was inside, made the mold. Some of them were cute little mushrooms or uh, different salt shakers. Some of them were kind of weird. I'm not really sure why the molds were made like that. But each time she used a mold, she didn't know what she was going to get. She had to trust that what was in there would be something that would be useful for her. This is what I would call conforming. There is a mold that our world places around us. There are expectations that are placed on us. There are roles that we're meant to play and things we're supposed to do depending on who we are in this world. It's meant to create uniform products. It's meant to be reliable, that we can assume we will always have people to do those different roles. It's low effort. There are lots of wonderful reasons why the world wants us to fit into those molds. But our choices are limited on who we can be when we fall into those molds. I want you all to take your hands 
and put your hands together like you're gonna pray, weave your fingers together. Um, and if you have your uh, pinky, the pinky that's closest to me, if you have your hands like this, if it's your right hand pinky, raise, raise your hand. Okay, we got a couple of right-handers. If it's your left pinky that's closest to me, who, oh good, we got both sides. Okay, so go ahead and put, put your hands together the same way. Now take your hands, open them up, and put the other pinky on the other side. Oh man, that does not feel so great, does it? No, there is like, this is the way. This is how we've always naturally f folded our hands. When we go the other way, it's, ooh, it's a little bit, it feels wrong. Um, like, it's almost like, are my fingers different sizes? Like, I don't get why that doesn't work the other way. So if you want to take my challenge, I see a couple kids in there, you might want to take my challenge. Here's my challenge. While I preach here, I want you to just keep going back and forth. Just like this, you can put your hands in your lap, but I just want you to go back and forth and back and forth while I continue to talk to you about the next section of that scripture, which is to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So this is about intentional formation. To be transformed by the renewing of your mind, you are to set yourself to notice what is maybe getting a little moldy and stale in your mind and what needs to be renewed. That first clasping of your hands is unintentional. It's not bad necessarily, but it's what you do without any intention. The other way is a bit more intentional. You have to have a reason why you might choose to fold your hands the other way. This is more like pottery on a free wheel. The potter takes a piece of clay, puts it in the center of the wheel, and begins to make something. This is a messy process. Wet clay goes everywhere. There's clay on the outside of the wheel. This is not nice and uh, easy, low effort like the mold is. I often hear people who are potters say that they listen to the clay. They feel what the clay wants to become. Every piece is unique when it is made on a wheel. And even if they all are the same, you can make similar things on a wheel, there are gonna be these small little variations. And usually they're intentional by the potter because the clay wants to do something a little bit different. It doesn't wanna be as tall as the other vases or cups. It doesn't want to be as thick as the other plates. Intentionally making a product that works along with what that clay wants to be as well. Now, my favorite parts about working on a wheel, one is that you can start again. <laughs> if you get something wrong, if it flops open, if it's not quite centered, it's not the end of the making. You can gather up the clay again and start over. You can also push the limits. I've seen some amazing videos of potters that are like, what would it be like if I used three pounds of clay? And they start with this massive amount. They have no idea if it's gonna work. They have no idea what it's going to become. They just wanna see if it's possible. And often they discover new talents, new things that they can do with that clay. With a mold, you don't discover new things. You can't push the limits of a mold. You certainly can't start again. You have to trash it, remix in some water. Potting on a free wheel is our intentional way of renewing ourselves and renewing 
our mind. Okay, so how is anybody feeling a little bit uh, more comfortable with the other way? Anybody like, oh, it feels, feels the same as the other one. No, not there yet? Okay, keep going. We, we've got some more to talk about. The last bit of this verse talks about discerning, so that we may discern what is the good and perfect will of God. Um, anybody a Pokemon fan? Anyone play Pokemon? No? Yeah? Good. So you have your, your main level characters. That's how they start off. I would say that is like choosing the evolved, ver the evolved uh, version of that Pokemon is discernment. So choosing, we got one or the other, we choose. But discernment is this next level of making a choice. It is an intentional look at all options available, going back and forth between what is comfortable and what is uncomfortable, trying to figure out which way is the will of God. Asking, am I just comfortable? Do I just want to choose this because it's the comfortable choice? Or is God asking me to maybe be a little bit uncomfortable in the way that I move forward in this choosing? In discernment, there is an option to synergize, to create something new, that maybe there's this option and this option. But as we discern and look at both the pros and cons, we might decide there's actually something that can be created out of both of them. Something that we can take the cons of, or the pros of both sides and make something better. So discernment is this intentional choosing, a way of stirring up our minds to see things in a new way, to feel what those options are like, not just choosing quickly. So we have a way that is comfortable, that is unintentional, and we have an option to be uncomfortable in what we choose. And so this verse is asking us to go about that discernment process to feel one way or another. And I will tell you, if you do this long enough, if you mold your hands and squeeze them different ways, there will come a time when it actually kind of feels the same. <laughs> it doesn't feel as awkward and unusual as it once did. And that is what this scripture is asking of us to say, don't just do what the world is asking you to do. Intentionally renew your mind and discern what God might be asking. Because by doing that, we create new possibilities. We create new ways that people can live in this world. We create a new kind of society and structure that people can live into stronger and more closely to God's perfect will. Ah, but then there's always a little bit of doubt. You see, when we do discernment and when uh, I talk to people about discernment, there is this voice inside of us that tries to tell us that there is a right way. When we think of God's good and perfect will, that if we choose the wrong way, that it would be the worst thing that we can do. But I want you to take, uh, take these verses, uh, take a look at Joshua that was read uh, before. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now this is Joshua speaking after Moses has just led the people. Moses is now gone and Joshua is in charge. I'm sure Joshua has a lot to discern in this moment. But Joshua understands that with God, there isn't a wrong way, necessarily. There might be a longer way around. But God will be with us wherever 
we go. Not if we make the exact right choice all the time in every step of our lives. Wherever molds of this world tell us that if life isn't rainbows and butterflies, then God must not be there. That if our lives are not going perfectly, if we don't have everything we've ever prayed for, that God must be mad at us. That is wrong. God is there. God is in those moments when it feels like there's no way we are in the right place. The places where we feel extremely uncomfortable, or maybe extremely and a little bit too comfortable. God is there. And so that knowledge, that word, wherever, gives us the confidence to do this discernment fully, to truly lean in to all directions and feel and sense where God is taking us. We don't have to be afraid of taking a wrong turn because even the wrong turns, God will be there and God will give us another chance to discern and find that way. God will be with us. And that is why this challenge in Romans is so powerful. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. Good, pleasing, and perfect. Amen.
prayers of the people today, I uh, ask you to go into that discomfort way of holding your hands. And as we pray for our world, may we be thinking about where, what discomfort we are being called into. God, we are witnesses to the world as it is and as we know you would like it to be. We are your representatives. We see ways that people are not treated in the way that you would have them be treated, and we ask that you give us the inspiration to reach out. We see that there are those who are celebrating the way that you have created them, even in the midst of people calling them an abomination and outcasting them from society. Help us to find ways to reach out, to bring them back in, and to help those see your creation in ways that they don't see where you are. God, our world is full of violence, of anger, of fear. In those spaces, help us to truly listen so that we may better know what it is like, so that we may better see what the solution can be, and that we can live closer to your perfect will. God, in our families and in our daily lives, there are struggles. Be with those who are overworked and those who are underworked. Be with those who are at the beginning of life and learning to be parents and those who are at the end as they reflect on all the gifts that you have given. Be with those who are sick, who are worried, who are uncomfortable, not of their own choosing. Help us find ways to give them bits and pieces of our comfort so that they remember that they are loved. And in this moment, God, hear these words that we have said many times, but renew them to our ears as we speak again. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
out in the very bottom of your bulletins, there are uh, offering plates on, at the exit. So we're still observing some COVID uh, adjustments that the church has made. Um, so make sure you notice those on your way out and as you go into this world. Remember that the God who created everything that you see, everything that you feel, looked into the world at this moment and said we needed you. You are here on purpose and created exactly as you are to bring something new. Something that may cause discomfort and may synergize into God's great and perfect will. So go and be you and shine your unique light for all the world to see. And take God's peace wherever you go. Peace be with you.